Welcome to Corrective Consciousness, episode 175, the podcast where we explore the inanity of pop culture. I'm your host, Vise the Bold, and this is... Lotus Prince. And uh, we have a, another really great show here today. We wanted to go over uh, some nostalgic kind of feelings that we have, some some catching up on childhood memories. Um, so the genesis of this, uh, this topic uh, this week is that... Um, I, w- I was thinking back to like some of my memories of, of things that uh, when I was a kid, I had seen in passing that I was like really interested in, but I, I couldn't, uh, you know, at- obtain at the time, didn't have enough money or, you know, things got away from me and I never revisited them until later. Uh, so it was, one, you know, one of those things where, you know, I, I recently caught up with it and uh, it, it came back into memory and the, uh, you know here we are so sometimes uh you know some of these things are like pretty hard for me to um you know track down so um i'll I'll let you in on the genesis of of this kind of um this topic so um i had remembered back to when i was a kid um my my older brother I, i have a much older brother uh he's seven years older than me um he's the one who's gotten me into all of the things that i uh, am really into today. It's actually pretty funny because he's he's really uh, dropped off of them. He 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 kind of doesn't. Um, he has a job that uh, just takes up a lot of his time, and he's a he's a family man. He he doesn't um, really keep up on pop pop culture stuff. But he's the one who introduced me to the video games that I love. Um, you know, I first played. Uh, all of our video game systems were ones that he bought uh, because you know he was he was older than me so he had you know he had money um you know he could he could do jobs you know around the neighborhood and things you know when i was too young to do that um so he um he was into comics and he was into movies um you know and i i got into all these things and uh, I remember some of the Batman comics that he was really into were really interesting. Um, he wasn't just a uh, a fan of like the regular Batman series. Like he would he would go after some of like the the uh, deeper cut kind of stuff. So um, he was into um, a lot of darker theme titles, um, which I, I tend to be a really big fan of. Uh, one of the things that he was into uh, back then was The Crow. Do you remember The Crow, the movie The Crow? I don't know if I ever saw it from beginning to end, but I've seen a bunch of it. You know, it was it was one of those darker titles in a time when there weren't like a whole lot of darker um, stories like that. You know what I mean? And uh, he also, um, you know, had the original Crow comic back when that was like an independent comic. You know, it wasn't like an image comic or anything like that. It wasn't like um, Marvel or DC. It was an independent comic that only like people that were really into read that kind of stuff. So he, he liked that kind of stuff. He liked um, the um, Edward Gorey kind of stuff as well. You know, the um, the the um, uh, was it the the ghastly crumb tinies. Uh, have I ever shown you that those things? Nope. Uh, it's kind of what um, Never Ending Nightmares is. Um, the the um, the art style is based off of. Yeah, that I know. Yeah. So he 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 actually had a poster of that when when we were kids. Like he had he had pictures you know that 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 guy drew on on his walls. Like he was into dark stuff and it was really cool. Well, the Batman uh, stuff that he was into was. Um, uh, so this was part of the Elseworlds um, uh, imprint of, of DC, which only uh, recently came back into fashion. Uh, do you know what they what they used the Elseworlds title uh, for recently? Oh, recently, no. Uh, so very recently, they uh, they used uh, the Elseworlds subtitle for uh, the Joker movie. Okay. So this is uh, what Elseworlds is. Is it is a an alternate version of the canon continuity, where uh, other versions of characters uh, can uh, are are put into different situations than they would have been in in the mainline continuity. So um, one one popular thing that is pretty much an Elseworlds title is Injustice. Um, so Injustice would be DC's, um, you know, one one of 
DC's like Elseworld imprint. You yeah, know, it's, where... it's it makes me think of Marvel's What If comics, except yeah. that Marvel's What Ifs are typically one comic and the story's over, whereas Elseworlds can be like serial. Yeah, that that is true to a point. Um, a, a lot of times the DC ones are uh, are prestige comics. Like they tend to have um, like really um, he- heavy stories that end up getting a lot of acclaim. Mm-hmm. So um, that's kind of the difference between the Marvel version. You're right in concept; they're very similar, but the um, a lot of times the Marvel ones end up kind of being goofy. Like, I, yeah, I think... they they have gone serious, but it's usually like, what if Spider Man kept his six arms? What if Wolverine fought Dracula or whatever, or like became Dracula? I think. Well, uh, actually, um, what... I, know, I know where you're going, but like, what if yeah. Wolverine was like King of the Vampires or something like that? Yeah. So yeah, um, it was actually uh, pretty funny. Like the in the in the what if continuity, there there were there was even some like shorts. Like uh, one of them was like, what if what if Spider Man was bitten by a radioactive sheep instead of a radioactive Spider Man? Yeah, Spider-Man. it's just ridiculous. Yeah, yeah. So like their what if ones are were a lot of fun, but they were never like prestigious. Um, DC's ones tended to be like really good. So. Uh, for instance, um, another big, um, like, um, trade paperback that ever a lot of people read back when I, um, we we were in high school that was very prestigious was uh, Kingdom Come. Kingdom Come was like a big deal. Like all the superheroes in this one had gotten old, and like the new generation had taken over, and like the old guys still needed to come in and and bust some heads. You know, it's just kind of like that. I, I talked about that a little while ago where Shazam's the bad guy, yeah. essentially. So um, the first Elseworlds title that I ever read was actually um, Batman. Uh, it, it's 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 part of the Batman and Dracula trilogy. So the first one in this is called Batman and Dracula Red Rain. Uh, and it was like a one-shot comic. It was like a, um, it, 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 like the cover of it just like was very striking to me. And it was, um, uh, it was like hardcover, so it was like something special. Like you never saw comic books in, in hardcover back then. So it, it was just like a really cool thing. So, uh, um, I read that, and uh, apparently later, later on it got a sequel. And then another sequel. So it was Bloodstorm and Crimson Mist. So in these, um, Batman gets bitten by Dracula, like fights Dracula and kills Dracula, but like Dracula ends up biting him. And uh, Batman ends up becoming a vampire and he has to deal with that. Um, he's Batman, so he has all of his, like, you know, his, his, uh, like, um, I, I, I guess feelings on things and, uh, and, and, and scruples, but he's also a vampire and he has to deal with that. So, uh, I've, I've also been like watching some other horror films since I, I got into them during Halloween. You know, I watched the, the, um, living, some of the living dead movies and things like that. And I, I also watched Dr. Sleep recently. Uh, so I, I watched let the right one in yesterday. Uh, which is a Swedish vampire movie that was remade into Let Me In. And uh, I ended up really liking that. So I, I ordered um, this Elseworlds Batman uh, Collection Volume 2, which has all three um, all three of these Batman and Dracula comics. And um, I can't wait to catch up on these because I, I only ever read the first one and I don't really remember it. So uh, I, I, I'm looking forward to... To, to looking back on it and and reading the whole saga i'm excited because like the art is very much uh like that that 80s uh dc aesthetic that i really miss it's kind of funny because like i i mainly grew up in the 90s you know we um i was only a little kid in the 80s so it, like i i love this early 90s 80s aesthetic that even like i wasn't like a part of but i i I still like looking back on it because that's kind of what the comics that my brother hand me down to me you know what i mean Mm -hmm. it's actually pretty cool so (laughs) i i just kind of wanted to say that i i ordered the comic i i have it right now and uh i can't wait to 
catch up on it. Um, do you have an example of something kind of like this or in this vein for yourself? Um, well, before I get to that, one thing I, I kind of want to point out that you might find interesting is that I was sure. more of I, I was a Spider Man guy. Mm, so like me I, too. like like I'm aware Batman was cool, but like I never like bought DC comics. Just didn't really care. But I used to go to like this local comic book convention um, where like it's it's not like you know Comic Con. It's just like literally a place where people like a bunch of dealers are just selling their comics. That's pretty much it. There's no there's no guests or anything. It's just a convention where you can buy a bunch of comics and from different people at once. That was how I tried picking up the Maximum Carnage series, like piece oh, by piece. Oh yeah, that's that's time. a good one. Oh, yeah, yeah. But um, the thing um with this place is that. Like a lot of places do, uh, they would have a, like like a raffle thing where you could win prizes based on when you came into the convention. They would give you a little ticket, and you could put the ticket into one of two or three pools, like comic book pool, like like baseball sports trading cards pool, or like the... I don't even know what the name for it was, but like the miscellaneous, I don't know, like the new weird cool stuff like Furbies and stuff like that. I don't know. Sure, sure. So I would go to, I would put my stuff in the comic pool because I didn't care about the baseball cards, but a lot of people were really there for the cards. So I ended up like winning several comics from this place like over the course of months. It was pretty cool. But one of them was actually a hardcover, I believe, uh, Batman Elseworlds book, which, uh, it's not vampires, but it takes place in medieval times, and Batman is never really called Batman. He's like, hmm. like a, a bat creature, like he's like a like a furry creature with wings that can talk like a man, and everyone's terrified of him because he's an actual creature lurking in the shadows. Oh wow! And the Joker is like a sorcerer called the Dark Joker, and he doesn't have this like constant rivalry with Batman. Like it's not like in the the mainline comics where they're rivals forever. It's more like Batman and the Joker meet for the first time. And they're like what, and they like clash a few times. But like, man, that comic gets dark. The Joker like literally eats people's brains in it. It's like unreal. Well, like I I also must specify that like my brother also <laughs> got some other like um Elseworlds titles from around that era as well, and uh, I really liked um like the whole aesthetic of it like really attracted me like there was um um batman gotham by gaslight which is supposed to be like a victorian era version Ooh. um apparently that one has a lot of acclaim that one's like high up there uh there's batman castle of the bat which is a uh like a, a, a frankenstein uh kind of take on things uh so they did like a whole bunch of horror ones uh one of the more famous elseworlds is uh red sun did you ever hear about that one? This is a Superman Oh, that's one. Superman if he fell into Russia instead of, like, Kansas exactly. or whatever. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That one was by um, Mark Millar, the guy who made Wanted made kick and, and Kick-Ass. Yeah, yeah. And um, and Kingsman. Um, oh, that was oh. him, too? Okay. Oh, yeah, yeah. Like, <laughs> he's, like, a superstar. He He's, like, a, a lot of a lot of the stuff he's made has become uh, movies. Uh, um, even uh, Logan is based kind of off of one of his stories. What was it called? Just like Old Man Logan. Um, old Man Logan. It it's yeah. it's not the same, but it it certainly inspired Logan. Okay, okay, that, that's for sure. But uh, well, kind, yeah, kind yeah. of like how like Thor Ragnarok is kind of Planet Hulk for a little bit, but not really. Yeah, it has like it, it clearly was inspired by it, like the yeah. aesthetic of it, the style of it, the themes of it, but the, like the the actual events in it are are completely different. Um, sure, sure. Like um. What, 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 like one of the f uh, of the factors of um, Old Man Logan is that like there are there's a clan of like hillbilly inbred hulks like in it and, <laughs> and and that he has to fight. Uh, his his sidekick is a blind uh, old man version of Hawkeye. Um, Jeez. Yeah, like it, it's um, they they get into the spider buggy like the spider buggy. Um, you know, like Spider-Man's like 
like the toy you could buy in the nineties. Wall crawling vehicle that he doesn't need. Wasn't uh, it like in like that. the sixties comics or something? But like, or was there a toy of it in the nineties? Because like there there was I know there was a period where it's like everybody's got to have a vehicle. Yeah, I think I think it was made in the eighties. You know, to sell oh, action 80s. figures. Um, the eighties really was like everything is a toy. Yeah, yeah, I think it was an action figure. My, my it, favorite is still um, the action figure for Ryu from Street Fighter. His motorcycle, the Karate Chopper. <laughs> It's like yes, like Rio would ever, like that character would ever. He, ride he in always that thing. walks because it's like <laughs> training. Like he's not trying to get there fast. He's trying to get there and like self reflect and strengthen his feet. <laughs> but yeah, uh, I'm I'm sorry I derailed you there. Um, no, I, I mean I just mentioned the Batman Elseworlds, Dark Joker, The Wild. I should lend that to you at some point. It's, oh yeah, uh, I would love it's, that. It's, it's a good read. It's, it really is a good read. And I think it was a little too mature for me when I first got it. I was just like, whoa, this is intense Har- right? horribly violent yeah, yeah <laughs> someone yeah, yeah. gets eaten alive in it it's like okay Jesus. that's that's really dark <laughs> well not fully eaten but like killed by being bitten enough it's just like this sucks <laughs> wow um and joker's cutting off people's tops of their heads and eating their brains like with a spoon it's just like whoa <laughs> like this this comic is no joke but um as for you know answering the actual question for this podcast uh catching up to my childhood i mean I, i'll still tie this one to video games because I never really went back to trying to collect comics as a kid. Like, I mean, there are, like, like comicsology, and there are websites where you can, like, read comics now. So if I want to do that, I can just do that. But the uh, as far as, I, don't, I guess, gaming is concerned, back in the 90s, unless you were, like, the rich kid, you probably had a Genesis or a Super Nintendo. And there was the whole war between which system is better who gives a shit just have fun playing your games but anyway sure. i was the genesis kid and Me you know too. like like a, I got a few friends of mine at super nintendos and they had like cool games on them like link to the past and mario rpg i was like oh that's pretty sweet um i mean I, I had played some emulators in college to scratch that itch but i never owned a super nintendo until like i don't even know like 2015 2016 i finally just was like ah, i just went ahead and bought one um and at this point i actually have a like a super nt from analog so that's the the way to go for me but i was able to actually finally like it's not even about playing the games because a bunch of the games that i played i'd actually played on emulation before but like the idea that as recent as like only five years ago I finally bought Donkey Kong Country. It's kind of like that. <laughs> you know, I played it, but, like, now I actually have it. And it's got 101%, which I'd really never done before until I streamed it a few years ago. So, like, it's little things like that. Or finally owning my own copy of Super Mario RPG. And I know nobody else gives a shit, but Final Fantasy Mystic Quest. I have nostalgia for that one. Uh, it's stuff like that. Like, I finally got the Super Nintendo. And even um, when I got the AVG... Uh, not the, or excuse me, AVG, the AVS, uh, the, the alternate, you know, analog, uh, NT mini. Sure. The the AVG is the other NES. And it's quite good. console. Quite good. The AVS, I keep fucking saying AVG, like the, the spyware stuff, but like AV, AVS is the other, like, yeah, modern Nintendo console. Cause I never owned an original Nintendo in any way, shape or form until, again, a couple of years ago. And I wasn't really much of a Nintendo kid. Super Nintendo, sure. But I never really got into the NES, ex- with, like, few exceptions. So, like, like I finally got Ninja Turtles 2, the arcade game, on NES. Ah, uh, what a what a, what a great game. I love yeah, that, that game. That game always kicked my ass. I never made it... It's hard. Like, at my best, as a kid, I made it to, like, the very beginning of level 3, and then I just got destroyed, but... Shredder in that game is especially... Uh, yeah, he, he like, clones himself, he's like, oh, fuck off. And, and but, he can kill you in one hit. Well, he can in every game. Yeah, but, oh, fuck yeah. off, like... <laughs> yeah, but it, it felt really good to get Turtles the Arcade game, just to say that I actually have it now. I haven't played that since I was a little kid, uh, and even then... This was when my our family like rented an NES for the weekend. I think I've told this story before. Uh, they got Turtles Two, Donkey Kong and Donkey Kong Junior, which my dad and uncle gave a shot to, and Ninja Gaiden, which did like didn't work. 
so I didn't realize that the game was fucking impossible until like I would see people talk about it on the internet later. <laughs> if I tried that as a kid, I would have beaten level one or something and been like, "Oh, geez, forget this." Yeah, that that game is, might be the hardest game on NES. That's that worth game's playing. insane. Yeah, it might it it might be like the hardest game that isn't an impossible piece of shit. Well, yeah, yeah. I was I was gonna say the hardest game that's like designed correctly. Yeah, like it's it's not hard because it's unplayable. It's hard because. It's fucking annoying. <laughs> I mean, one of the worst features is actually a glitch, but <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, the thing that sends you back to like the beginning, uh, like two levels before after you lose to the uh, boss. Oh yeah, the final boss. You still yeah. have to play all of level six or eight or whatever it is. Yeah, again. yeah. That, that's, that's actually that's a punishing. glitch. That's that is that's really rough. They didn't mean to do that <laughs> when they were programming. That that is no mercy. Like, and, and even when you see speedrunners do it. Like, oh yeah, we're really good at Ninja Gaiden, but we always get a little tense on the final boss because, boy, is that a time loss if you die. Yeah, <laughs> you have to, yeah. You have to do, like, three sucks. levels again. And, it's, and it's... that level is the worst. It's yeah. it, it's not fun. Yeah, yeah. And also, actually, like I said, our family grew up with a Genesis, but I remember hearing as a kid about the Sega CD. It was kind of like the Wii U at the time. I didn't know what a Sega CD was. I, didn't, I thought it was another system. I didn't realize it was an attachment. Whereas with the Wii U, a lot of people thought it was an accessory to the Wii and not a new system. But it was like Sonic on like a CD-ROM. Like, what is this? Like, I had no idea. And I never really saw the game. Even, even like, my, my rich kid friend, I don't think, had or at least didn't show me, like, a, like a Sega CD. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, we like, our family eventually sold our Genesis and its games to help pay for a Nintendo 64. Sure. <clears throat> and, a lot know, of people did that, that kind of stuff back then. Yeah, and, and at the time, no regrets. Like, sure. it wasn't like... Like, at the time, I was like, oh, no, Mom, I'm losing my stuff. We were like, okay, all right. And we didn't have that many games anyway. No, and you were excited ones... about the new the new shit, man, you know? Yeah, and even yeah. the ones that we did have, like, I didn't... It's not like I sold Shining Force 2. Like, the games that we sold, I, I was able to very easily get as an adult for, like, you know, $7 for X-Men. Like, whatever. It's not a big deal. But, um, like, actually, you had given me for... I forgot what the occasion was. Like, a birthday or a holiday or something but you actually got me like a, a genesis and a sega cd so i got the genesis well, sure. back and it was for christmas i remember that's what it was yeah it was like so i got a genesis back and i never had had a sega cd before so that that opened up a whole new dimension of things to play like i think what was kind of funny is that um like, after that, I started looking for Sega CD games, like Sonic CD. It was super cool to do. The funny thing is, I think I actually... My memory is hazy on this one, but I might have picked up Snatcher before I actually owned a Sega CD. Because you had shown that to me years ago. Because, like, you've had a copy for a long time. But I remember there was, um... Like, a, a semi-local comic shop. Like, I, I took you there once. It was, like, the Game Zombie place. And, um... They, they, they were having, like, money troubles or something, so they took their really high-ticket items and were selling them at pretty solid discounts, like like cotton, like American oh, cotton, yeah. um, and, and they had Snatcher. So, like, on one hand, like, it's still a lot of money, like, what I paid for it, but at the same time, I will not get a better deal than that. So I actually called you up on the phone, like, should I go through with this? And then I eventually did. And like when 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 you finally got me like a Sega CD, I was able to like I could play it at home now. It was like such a crazy feeling. <laughs> so like, I mean, I got a Saturn later too, but I didn't really have like childhood regrets of missing the Saturn. I like barely knew what one was. But like the Super Nintendo and the Sega CD, and to a degree, uh, the AVS for the original Nintendo, uh, I got in like the the mid to late twenty tens. You know, like, getting the idea of getting an actual Super Nintendo system in, like, 2015, 16, and now I got a Super NT, but, like, that was just kind of, like, radical for the time. Even the original Xbox I got, like, a few years ago. It just feels weird. I haven't caught up with that one. I haven't really played anything on it, but I have a few games for it. But it's, like, that stuff I missed. Like, now is my chance. And it's... I, I, one other thing I'll mention real quick. Yeah, yeah. This is, this is not the same as catching up the childhood memories, it's just, like, I was, like, a generation behind. I got a PS2, like, when the PS3 was a couple years old. But depending on what era of gaming it is, and also not to mention, depending on the games, you can get a lot of stuff dirt cheap. Like, every PS2 game I got was, like, 20 bucks or less, except for the high-ticket items. And it was like that for getting the Genesis stuff that I'd missed, like, as a kid. And 
Mario RPG was different. But, like, the Super Nintendo stuff otherwise was mostly, like, not overly expensive. Um, Sega was cheap. Super Nintendo was not overly expensive. And Xbox was also, like, mostly 20 bucks or less, except for, like, again, the, the items you would notice. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I was going to say... Um... Uh, one of the one of the things I wanted to do was uh, give you an opportunity to kind of share uh, the the games that I had liked when I was a kid. You know, I I oh, yeah. I, I, I really wanted to show you like the uh, the Sega CD stuff when when I I kind of uh, picked one of those up for you. So um, yeah, no, I really do appreciate that too. Like I remember, yeah. like I think you had said like the the Sega CD in particular was being like repaired or whatever because those systems are kind of finicky. <laughs> Oh yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, one other pick that I wanted to um, quickly mention here. It's 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 not one that I really have um, had a chance to look too much more into. But uh, when I was a kid, I remember um, uh, watching this like primetime TV series like a cartoon that was like premiering primetime like on uh, on the wb network when it was pretty young uh -huh. um and uh since now uh, you know wb network doesn't even exist anymore it's you know it's uh, cw but um i i thought it was really unusual for a a cartoon to pr premiere primetime like on on network tv and it hardly ever happened um, you know, there was a, a couple occasions when like Batman, the animated series had like a couple early episodes on, mm -hmm. um, premiering on primetime that, but that was just about it. Um, yeah, it wasn't, it wasn't like it is now where, you know, you, you, you can, you, you know, there's a diverse audience of whatever, you know, cartoons were mainly for kids at, at, at this point in time. Um, and I kind of remember uh i i was really enthralled by it it was like about a teenager and uh uh him finding this like glove that um like his dad could wear and it turns out his dad was an alien and oh. the 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 glove gave him like superpowers and only only the teenager could wear the glove because like it would like crush anybody else's hand huh it was really interesting, and I didn't get very far with it. I I I, I missed it, and a lot of times back then, uh, things would get rescheduled, uh, and you wouldn't oh, and know they would about it. Never tell you, yeah, and, yeah. They wouldn't they wouldn't tell you, or and you would they miss a critical episode. Fuck you. Yeah. Wait till wait till the rerun comes. We don't know when. We'll tell you, or we won't. <laughs> yeah, and this was like a limited series, so like you would have to wait for the whole series to replay. Yeah, you know, it wasn't it wasn't like a, a regular syndicated series, so it wasn't like you could catch it in reruns. You would have to wait for a special airing of it, um, and it wasn't very popular. Um, it it was um, it, it it was apparently expensive. It was uh, help made by uh, Steven Spielberg, and the world has since forgotten about it. I bet huh. you can't even tell me what it is because you probably don't even know about it. I never heard of it. Yep, it's called Invasion America. I had never to heard of it. I I remember it, it 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 involving the name America, but I I didn't even know what the rest of it was. I didn't know it was Invasion America. So like I had to look up like prime time like on Google prime time uh, America in like you know alien thing, and yeah. I had to search through like dozens of pages before I actually found it, and. Nowadays, it's a little easier to find. So um, some maniac um, had archived it from back then and actually has the entire series on YouTube. You can't find it anywhere. There's no DVDs of it. There's no VHSs of it. Um, you cannot watch it uh, like on streaming services or anything. But they have a good, a pretty good version of it on youtube and you can watch the entire series yeah actually that that kind of reminds me like um, my friend did that with um like found it like on youtube like i mean now you can get it on on disc but uh, like the uh, like the old the old Mega Man cartoon oh yeah yeah the um, ruby sparks one yeah 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 also um in college we watched the spider-man series because i'd only catch sporadic episodes of that so we watched the whole series in college uh i myself got the x-men animated series dvds we watched i watched that with mr ryu uh that was cool to catch up on as well because spider-man and x-men were my jam and it's like but i would never really regularly watch them 
So every once in a while, I would tune into some episode that was like part three of something, and I'd be like, "What's this?" So yeah. now I finally get to catch up. What a lot of people don't realize too is that like, um, like especially with like uh, cartoons back then, they you in order to to like they they used to play around with the times. They would switch times yep. around. Um, they uh, especially as like they became less popular or later on in the series. You know, they they would shift things around and wouldn't tell you that they were ending, and maybe they might air the the final episode once, and then it would be replaced by something else the next week. So it wasn't like they would re-air them either. That was the thing um, with those series; like nobody ever saw the final episode of anything. Yeah, yeah. I I, I remember only really ever seeing the uh, final episode of Mighty Max because um, they they ended up playing that there were enough episodes of that where they they played that in syndication for a long time so it was like on, on during the weekdays so i i would frequently catch the last episode of that and that was a really good last episode um so uh, do you ever see mighty max a couple of episodes it was good but it's another thing I, I didn't really like latch onto so like i i didn't i mean at this point i think you told me how it ended but i didn't know for a while yeah, so this one was pretty cool. So what ended up happening was um, um, Mighty Max, you know, fights the Skull Master, I think is what his name is, yeah. um, and uh, who was played by Tim Curry, by the way. Yep. Um, and he, they end up sending, it's um, like setting back time, yeah. and it actually ends right where the series begins. So it, it, it it's perfect for syndication. It'll just play in the loop again. <laughs> it, the only final episode I think I caught of anything like by accident, like that, that, that was a cartoon was probably of all things, Jumanji. Remember the Jumanji cartoon? Yeah. I love that. That one. Cause it was very different from the movie in that they would keep going into the game and concluding a there. turn by, yeah, he was just in there the whole time. And they would have to, like, do whatever the game told them to do. Like, you know how with Alan, it was like, in the game, you must Tim wait Tim Curry until... was in that, too. <laughs> yeah, but, like, in the game, you must wait until someone rolls a five or eight. Sure. Um, and then when someone did that, he gets out. So with the kids they of Jumanji, they would always go into the game and then do whatever the clue told them to do. And then they would go back out. And then they could roll the dice again for some other episode. Alan's situation sucked in that show. Do you remember what his situation was in that game? So he was stuck in there until something very specific happened. I well, think. that's always the yeah. case. Yeah, yeah. But he 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 didn't read the clue, right? He didn't yes. know what it was. He had no idea what it was he was supposed yeah. to do to get out. That fucking sucks. So I think one um, episode he actually does get out. Um, I think it's one of the last episodes. I think. Well, yeah, the, yeah. the finale oh, is when. It? Yeah, like there's some fortune teller or some seer or whatever in the game, and they're able to like uh i don't know like look up what his clue was but there was all this tension because it shows up in the crystal ball but then the crystal ball drops and breaks and they're like you've got to be fucking kidding me but then they're like wait it's still reflecting all the pieces anyway so they, they were able to make it work and it turns out he had to do the old fairy tale thing of pulling the thorn out of the lion's paw and it was this big ironic thing because the lion's been like chasing him the entire series like giving him opportunities to do it, but he yeah, it's like you're, I mean, what, what are you gonna to do? do? It's a lion, like you're gonna yeah. die. So like, eventually he was like, oh, that's that was it, and then he just like plucks it out of the lion's paw, like the lion just lets him do it, and then the lion licks his face, and it's like you're out. It's like that. That's all I had to do, like the whole time. I've been <laughs> here for like forty years. <laughs> yeah, Jesus Christ. So like, that was pretty entertaining. Oh, uh, um. <laughs> the, 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 that was that was a good series. I, I really yeah. enjoyed that one. Uh, I think that was on UPN back in the day, if I remember right. Um, let me see. Uh, yeah, I, I I just have those like memories like that, like like these things that were like kind of unfinished that I had to go back to. Another one of them uh, was uh, this was actually kind of a common experience uh, between me and you, um, believe it or not, but. Um, when I was a kid, like I was like nine or ten years old, eight, nine, ten years old, 
my I was kind of fascinated by horror movies. I was terrified by them, but I was like fascinated by them because like I, I would always go into like a video store and see like all of the horror movies on the wall and see all the different sequels. Yeah, but, like the covers on the VHS tapes oh, yeah. were usually pretty creepy. Like even like Leprechaun looked creepy as hell, even though the movies are goofy, but the covers were like ooh. Um, and back then I probably wouldn't have seen them as goofy. You know, it's it's just one of those things. Um, because like oh, if you actually watched it, yeah, I would have been yeah. creeped out by them. Um, but, uh, you know, it, it was just one of those things. I was really fascinated by the story that these movies told, you know, like yeah. with, with all their different sequels and like all these different, like, um, you know, Friday the 13th had like a billion sequels and, uh, you yeah, know, yeah. I, 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 Oh, like what, what happens in this one that leads to this one, you know, that mm-hmm. kind of thing. But, uh, my, um, one of my friends, told me about like this mythical movie that he saw on tv he just caught it on tv one day which is sometimes what you had to do yep and like it was amazing it was really cool and like nobody knew where to find the vhs anywhere he looked all over for it oh yeah could never find it and i i always look to it for this day but he's like it was such a cool movie uh, it, it was a it was a horror movie and it, it featured this kid who uh, who shot an Estes rocket into uh, in, in, into uh, uh, a bad guy at the end of the movie. And oh then, yeah, I saw that on TV. Yeah, <laughs> and it ended up being the gate. The um, gate is fantastic. So it was it was just one of those things like and. Um, I, I was really a big movie watcher, and I always had remembered that. I was like, oh, I was always kept that in the back of my head. Like, where can I find this? And I, yeah, I uh, caught ev- that on TV a couple times. It was one of those rare ca- – like, oh, the gate's on. Hell yeah, I'll watch yeah, this. I never caught it myself. And, like, uh, every once in a while I, I would talk to, you know, another big movie fan, and they would – they would be like, "Oh man, yeah, you should definitely see that one. It's so hard to find. You can't, you can't find a copy of it anywhere. That kind of thing." It was pretty rough to find, yeah. It, it, yeah. So late, you know, one one time when I was going to Best Buy, just like searching for DVDs to watch or whatever, you know, from time to time, I, I go to the bargain bin for five dollars. I see the gate right on top is. of like a big pile of movies that nobody cares about. And I'm like, "Oh my god, you you got to be kidding me! I, I've been yeah. waiting to see this movie forever." And I, I, I take it home and I watch it, and I was not disappointed. I love it. Well, well that, that's the big thing. Movie. Like, that's that's the big thing. Ten years ago, they said it was cool. Is this movie going to fucking suck when I watch it as an adult? Like, no. The gate is great. Yeah, and then later on, we as a group watched that very same copy that I picked up. Hell yeah. Uh, um, and, and you know like, what? I don't think any of us has uh, seen the gate, too. There's a gate, too? There's been a gate, too, yeah. What? Yeah, it's, uh, it's it's been out forever. Like I didn't know about that. Yeah, it might have even come out only a little while after the gate. Just nobody's ever seen it. <laughs> nobody's ever seen it. I mean, just like who do you know who's seen the fucking gate two? <laughs> oh man, I I've I never need seen to... it on TV or on store shelves or anything. Wow. I don't know if it's any good. Like a lot of times, the sequels to these things are awful. Who knows? But like, I don't know. Well, I I know that. Um... Uh, you know, it's it's on Blu-ray now, and you can actually get it on Prime Video like very easily. Um, you can yeah, on Prime Video you can rent it for uh, three ninety nine. That's like it's it's uh, it's so so cool. I mean, when when I I remember also there was this other movie called Mosquito that featured giant uh, mosquitoes, yeah. and I couldn't for the life of me find the DVD of it or or VHS of it or anything. I caught it on TV once and it was amazing, and it was like one of like my favorite uh, memories from when I was a kid because I watched it with my mom and my mom isn't into that kind of stuff but she was laughing her ass off because you know it's it's cheesy yeah, it's, it's a goofy horror movie like but an, it, an intentionally great. goofy horror movie yeah yeah it has it also has like cameos of like famous like movie um, horror movie people like um, yeah. you know Gunnar Hansen's in it uh, the guy yeah, who yeah. was uh, Leatherface and and so like I I was like oh man uh, like. I, I, I got to do this. And it finally came out on DVD and it turns out it's like one of the rarest DVDs around. So like it's, it's over a hundred, hundred bucks for this movie. Cause nobody wants it, but me, you know, and, and I guess a few uh, like people that actually know what it is. Yeah. And, and so like, I still couldn't get a copy. It was still out of my reach. And then uh, eventually like Amazon prime comes, comes around one day and uh, I can, I can buy the movie digitally for like uh, five ninety nine as opposed to yeah sold uh, yeah yeah exactly like I'm not I, I I usually don't buy like digital copies of movies uh but like 
<laughs> five ninety nine versus what, like a uh, hundred and thirty bucks? Come on. Yeah, well, well, that's the same thing for me. Like Misadventures of Tron Bon, ten dollars or like three hundred dollars. Like, hmm. Ooh, the Gate Two Blu Ray. Uh, twenty two to ninety six on Blu Ray. I might, I might, I might pick this up. <laughs> I have no idea oh, if that movie's any good. Because, like, my dad has seen, for example, The Lost Boys 2, and he says it's just god-awful. Well, you know me. Like, sometimes, even if I don't like it, I still want to see it. You know well, what I mean? Enough, like, and And it's still kind of interesting to watch, even even if it doesn't end up being good. It's just like, oh, man, the sequel to, the, to Kate. This is yeah. cool, you know? That's like, true. You know, so, like, I don't know. It's some, some, sometimes the curiosity... Uh, factor is 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 worth it, the purchase. Uh, maybe for that watch. Yeah, no. And I gotta show you Pumpkinhead. Uh, maybe I might buy these both both on Blu-ray because I could get the gate on Blu-ray finally. I only have the DVD. Oh. So, uh, and I think this is you know remastered and ha- is widescreen yeah. finally. I, I I think I might have a standard standard edition. So, um, this will be good. Uh, I could get I could get both movies for fifty bucks. I might I might I might, I might spring for that. But uh, we'll, we'll we'll have to report back later. I think we should uh, move on to our uh, why yes our, our uh, weeklies here. Sure. So for comments, uh, Anthony Cooper had a few comments. Uh, one, Hideo Kojima always has his own trend and goes off the wall. One of the reasons I love his games. I mean, yep, that's that's become his thing. Yeah. Like he he definitely has a style, and if you like it, then you know what you're in for. Uh, he also says, I believe. That the generation, like, I guess this one, this generation of gaming has lost its identity. We're so focused on one typical kind of gaming, like, like looting or microtransactions or grinding or spending money for the faster way. Story-based games are kind of dying because the focus on multiplayer experience. I really believe the review for Death Stranding had to be a kid, maybe in the early 20s, reviewing a game that doesn't know anything about, like, the genre. So I ask you, what do you see in a review? What are you looking for to say if it's outstanding or if it's trash? Uh, I would say the first thing I don't look for in a review is numbers, because unless it's 10 or 1, it, like, why? So, like, I want to see mainly two things. Number one, reasons for why somebody likes or does not like a game. And number two, if I follow a particular reviewer that I kind of have a sense for what they like, then if they like a game or not, that might actually like means something to me based on somebody else's opinion yeah i I was actually gonna say something similar um i when it comes to reviews um i i don't tend to follow um what what critics say generally um because i think sometimes they get caught up in in uh the expectation of their viewership or their readership so i i don't think i sometimes i can get a we can get a genuine um like opinion out of them because they're yeah. influenced by what the expectations of their audience. Um, for instance, uh, I, I know that some of the um, uh, more popular YouTube personalities, like, um, you know, um, uh, like, I don't know, like uh, any of the angry ones or anything like that yeah. um, are, uh, you know, expected to rag on, certain games or certain types yeah, of games yeah, or yeah. certain features and things like that um and 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 get their audience all riled up well that's that's the thing especially if it's video format it's more about the performance yeah, like than the jim actual sterling review. or something you know i'm thinking of um now uh i do have a a website that i like but it's on the smaller side i tend to like um usgamer.net uh probably the best out of them all um uh, I don't really trust IGN's reviews. I, I don't really go. Oh, to I was going to mention an IGN review, actually. Yeah, I, I, IGN reviews tend to be very um, not inaccurate or or whatever, but they they have such a variation of quality in in their uh, in their publishing that I can't trust them. Yeah, I, um, I was actually going to mention because like Limited Run Games recently released Blasphemous, and um, I was looking up video of that game and i just i just wanted to find gameplay i wasn't even looking for a review i just wanted to see gameplay and one of the videos i clicked on just ended up being an ign review and there was one part they mentioned where they're like oh well fighting the enemies is really cool and there's with there are some palette swaps but for the most part 
you have different variations of enemies like throughout the game as long as you progress forward, finding them super interesting. But the negative side is that you're going to end up backtracking a bunch in this game, and when you do, the enemy experiences are going to seem mundane. And like half yeah. of the comments were like, oh, you mean every Metroidvania ever made. Thank you for that, Gem. You know? <laughs> I can't believe this Metroidvania would do such a thing. <laughs> they tend to be out of touch. Um, like they, they, they've been, um, IGN has been known to uh, publish reviews that are like way out of whack. Uh, even, I'm still even salty compared about... to their, uh, uh, their peers. You know, I'm I'm still salty about God Hand and uh, Double Nier. Dragon Neon and Near. Um, I, I didn't watch that review, but I know what you mean. Yeah, they just they didn't realize the map was constantly on your screen. Um, Pikmin, somehow, Pikmin Three got a god awful review and didn't deserve it. Um, but, like, IGN's review was three out of ten because it's fucking hard, and like the game's trailer says it's ball bustingly hard. It's like literally a quote, and like enemies yeah. pop out about of nowhere. No, they don't. They like there is one level where that happens, and that's the level's gimmick, and that's super late game. What the fuck are you talking about? And Double Dragon Neon also a three out of ten. It's crazy hard. It's like that's the one Double Dragon game you could replay old levels and grind in. Like, what are you talking about? The game's as hard as you want it to be. Yeah, US Gamer is a lot better. So, um, it the editor is Cat ba- Bailey. Uh, I don't know if you ever heard of her, but she is um a former writer of um uh one up.com which mm-hmm. um and she's she's good friends with um the former uh editor in chief of of um one up.com which is uh, Jeremy Parrish uh, of Retronauts fame uh and i i really like the way that she runs things she's um she's very um uh objective in a lot of ways and uh her staff is all v- very good at, at mm-hmm. taking a look at things. I mean, they they miss everything in hindsight, just like anybody else would. Like a, a lot of a lot of games. Um, I mean, judging them in hindsight is is the is always the best way to do it. But like you know, as they're coming out, this is the best we got. Um, the only problem with their website is it, it's a little bit on the smaller side, so they don't get every single game reviewed. Um, they sure. they only review like some of the biggest ones and or maybe some of the most more notable uh, indie titles, but they they miss a lot of games. So mm-hmm. or, or they'll take a while to get to them. Sure. So uh, I don't specifically go after that. So my um, current way of uh, of fi- finding out whether I like a game is primarily through the people that I follow on Twitter. Um, that's that's the thing yeah like for me it's forum discussions and twitter like yeah. usually for the for the most part if i think a game will be interesting i'll just buy it like yeah, after a while exactly. it's discounted but like i'm i'm like it's very rare for me to outright hate a game like unless unless everybody says oh wait there's some horrible thing about this game you need to know yeah, and you usually won't even i'll touch just it. yeah usually i don't ignore or usually i ign- don't really follow reviews i just kind of like just just get something if i think it looks interesting yeah i i i think that um uh the people that i follow on twitter i follow because i i have similar uh tastes to them um so so it's not like it it isn't curated to some degree um a lot of times uh you, you know this if i hear anything um is interesting about a game uh usually yeah, that yeah. that will entice me to begin with so yeah, I, pl- I played through the kingsfield trilogy like i'm i'm willing to put up with little nitpicks that people will have bigger problems with yeah exactly exactly so uh, i'm i'm um like you know I, I usually go by word of mouth, which is actually kind of what I've always really done. I, I, yeah. I used to work at a GameStop, and I used to go off of uh, recommendations from my coworkers, or that's, or that's even, it, yeah. um, uh, and that that tends to be the best way because, like, um, there are uh, sometimes a lot of times just by talking to a person, you can tell, um, like, if you have uh, common tastes. Uh, and 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 usually that is the best way to tell whether you're going to like a game or not. Yeah, because like usually like you mentioned Jim Sterling and like I'll watch his videos occasionally. You know, I, I watch some Angry Joe videos. I watch Yahtzee for zero punctuation. Yeah, they're entertaining, but I, I don't That's agree what with I was them with say. a lot of things. Yeah, like I, I watch them because their videos are fun to watch. I'm not really like what what's their opinion of this game. I need to know to determine whether or not I'll buy it. Like I don't really watch the reviews for ironically the reason they make those videos it's more like oh they have an entertaining way of going about it 
Yeah, exactly, exactly. Uh, uh, I, I a lot of my um, like um, you know uh, introductions to games came from like Hardcore Gaming 101 when I was, when yeah. I was active in their forum, uh, you know, years ago. Uh, I'm I, I'm not really active in that forum anymore, but um, that that's where a lot of the foundation of my tastes came from. Um, so I mean, like I, I um, sometimes I'll hear about a game through you, or sometimes you'll hear about a game through me, and mm-hmm. I and we have a, a pretty similar taste in video games, I would say, and um, uh, or or at least we could tell whether the other one will like it. Well, well, that's the thing. Yeah. You're not gonna play Kingsfield ever. I'm not gonna play most shooters no, ever. But, but like where I'll, we have overlap, there's an agreement. And yeah, 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 either of us will watch the other play those games that we wouldn't play ourselves anyway. Exactly, exactly. You know, like I, I'm not gonna. Uh, I, I consider playing Kingsfield, but I really just want to see it. So well, that, that's the thing. Yeah. Like, see how see how you like it when you get like three shotted when you turn the game on. It's like, are you fucking kidding me? Yeah. So I'm I'm, I'm really just gonna watch your live streams and uh, and let's plays of those games. You know, like um, uh, I I think With I'll get enough out of for that. God's sake. <laughs> What's that? With a guide, for God's sake. Like, those games are, like, unplayable without a guide. Yeah, I mean... That's why they bombed so hard when they came out. Because, like, if there was a guide, then you would have a clue, you know? Sure, sure. Like I said repeatedly, Kingsfield 1 came with a phone card (laughs) to call the helpline. Yeah, yeah. All right. Well, um, uh, we we have some other comments. I'm, I'm yeah, sure we can bit more. move on to. Uh, Anthony Cooper said one more thing, which was the visual novel genre has a bad rep. I'm from Chicago, and I went to GameStop for Danganronpa V3, and many GameStops don't even hold that game. I was going crazy. Yeah, that's one of those games that like GameStop has a copy of. So it's like we Americans have heard of it now, but like mm, visual novels still aren't really gripping. Like it's it's a slow transition, I think. I, I think they're starting to, um, especially with like Steins Gate being um, released physically recently. There, yeah. there have been more physical releases of these games, and I think they're catching on. Yeah, uh, Living Court. Now the, the next three comments are about useful household objects and games. So, um, Living Corp says defense items in the remakes, uh, the, the the Resident Evil remakes. Sure, you can argue the flask, uh, like kind of metal bottle haha is more useful because it lets you carry lighter fluid to burn zombies before they become crimson heads but there's more defense items than that and they can be used for the most for most enemies including bosses as a get out of jail free card and you can use glass bottles to make v jolt for plant 42 once letter openers for the win yeah those defense daggers are pretty great Mm -hmm. and if you use them on zombies possibly on dogs too if you blow their heads off you can get them back which is crazy neat like on the gamecube i couldn't believe it uh general ledger says the most useful household object in video games i can think of is a claw hammer you can pry things loose you know with the claw end nail things shut repair or craft use it as a weapon throw it for distraction use it to erect and or break obstacles it's kind of rare that games let you do all that especially the claw part but i'm kind of thinking call of duty zombies where you can like board up windows and stuff like that i don't know if you actually have a a hammer for that as opposed to you just kind of do it but yeah a claw hammer like especially in real life is incredibly versatile it's also a very brutal weapon (laughs) yeah like 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 either either end is very bad yeah surprisingly few games let you use just the hammer you have in your garage like as a weapon I, i know that like penumbra overture did um, I mean, if there was a this... zombie apocalypse, you would better believe that I uh, I would have a claw hammer. Like that, that's like one of the best things that you could have. It is, but it's very. Oh, oh well, yeah. I was I was gonna say for combat, it's very close range. But yeah, for, I mean, as a, a baseball tool, bat though, would yes. be better. Um, base, uh, as long as it doesn't break, maybe a metal bat. Well, yeah, metal bat is what I mean. Yeah, or yeah, or anyway, maybe a sledgehammer. Yeah, if you can deal with it. that. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and finally, Insane Buffoon says, Deadly Premonition is the ultimate love-it-or-hate-it game. Uh, Star Tropics on the NES is one of my favorite games, but it does take some getting used to. Mm. And the fl- I like this, actually. I forgot about this. The flashlight in Alan Wake is essential to defeat enemies. Yeah. Um, yeah, I remember Alan Wake's big twist is that light is more important than conventional weaponry. So, like, the best weapons in the game are, like, flashbang grenades and things like that. Whereas in most games, those are only good for stunning <laughs> 
Uh, and he also says, Dead Rising lets you combine everyday items into deadly weapons. Yeah, yeah especially Dead I Rising forgot. 2 uh, has Yeah, has I'd forgotten the about that. Yeah, you put yeah. so much just mundane crap together and turn it into some crazy murder weapon. I like uh, I like the bullhorn that you can make with, like, a traffic cone and, like, yeah, uh, yeah, 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 that was really fun. And then finally, uh, Metal Gear, I can't believe I didn't think of this one, Metal Gear Solid's cardboard box is silly but effective. Yeah. Most of the time, you just cover yourself with it and hope enemies don't notice, but when you're in a factory, that's really, really useful. Yeah. I also like the incredibly stupid one in Peace Walker where it has a little siren on it. You can heal with it. I don't know why you put a fucking siren in a cardboard box, but it's video game. This is fine. <laughs> Alright, so finally, our question from Sabrina Hengel is, if you could get away with something without having to suffer any consequences from it, what would you do? It doesn't have to be something bad. Something that is inconvenient side effects is fine too, such as eating all the food you want without having to ever worry about gaining weight. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know. I- I'm probably thinking of really simple stuff. Like if I could just take a couple of weeks off of like any job with zero <laughs> consequences, or if I could just like go on a vacation somewhere by like stowing away in a plane and nobody cares, you know, I just, I just go, you know, like so- something like that. Something would that wouldn't great. really hurt anybody, but like would, yeah, like, Benefit I've always you. wanted to go to this country. Wouldn't it be great if I could just do that and not have to worry about calling out of work or doing this or that or going through all sorts of red tape? Like, that'd be nice. Yeah, I, I would agree with those. I mean, like, I, I always, um, I, I guess this is turning more into, like, a wish fulfillment thing, but, like, it, I always said to myself, if I ever won the lottery, I would I would quit my job and then, like, um, not that uh, my current job is actually, um, like, the best job I've ever had. I actually really like it, but... Um, which is saying a lot since I hated my, I hated my, my, my profession before. Yeah. Um, and, and you know that from, from all the yeah, years yeah. that I was in it, but, um, I, I wish I could, um, like set up an arcade, um, oh, and, okay. and, and put together a really cool collection, um, and not have to put up with the, um, consequences of the possibility of the, the business failing. Um, oh, there we go. Okay. Yeah, the, 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 that that that's something that I like. If if I won the lottery, this is something that I would do. I would I would I would curate a collection of arcade games and and um, maintain them. Um, I I think that would be a really cool thing to do. And and you know have people over, you know that that kind of thing. Book it for special events or whatever. Uh, and then so everyone will be like, "Do you have Smash?" <laughs> Do you, do you have Mario? Yeah, so our our friend Perry um like came over and looked at my like vast collection and the the very the very first thing he said is like do you have do you have Smash Brothers? That's fantastic. <laughs> it was it was the funniest and most infuriating thing he could have said to me. <laughs> <laughs> and he knew very well what he was doing. It was Yeah, really that, that well, yeah, that's the joke. Yeah, yeah. Like if, if only I could find somebody on this earth who has Super Smash Brothers. <laughs> Well, that, that's kind of the funny thing is you you have to realize that your collection's for you, not for um, anybody else. Because although, they... although I, I will say, though, that is a perfectly valid question when you have a bunch of people over. Yeah. Because, like, anybody could play Smash, but, like, can you really get eight people together? Well, everybody wants to, wants to hear the hits, you know? Uh, it, it's kind of like going to a, a rock concert and, you know, not hearing the singles. Like, I mean, like... Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it's cool that you got to show off these songs that didn't get a whole lot of airtime, but also we came here for this stuff. Yeah, we want we want to hear Feel Good Inc. <laughs> exactly, exactly. So, um, like, it, and we did. It, yes, yes. Uh, I, they they played like every single one of the hits except for one, um, which I was very surprised by, and some deep deep cuts too. They were really comprehensive. They they, they played everything but Dare. Um, which that's r- oh yeah because they couldn't get like the British guy yeah and I think it was mostly a logistics thing um, and but... mostly uh maybe we don't want him piss drunk <laughs> slurring his oh, way to the song I, again. I, I, I was at that concert Kaya, where Kaya, he was barely conscious he, he was barely <laughs> conscious and he had he had liquor in his hand while he was si- <laughs> it, it, he was a fucking mess that guy um he it's, it, like it. it I only know of two songs that had to be renamed because the person singing them could not sing it correctly. Oh, Dare? And in, in the Garden in, of Eden. Yeah, in the Garden of Eden. <laughs> in, a, in a Garden of Eden? What does that mean? It means nothing. It's in the Garden of Eden. You know what the funny thing is? I never knew that that was widely mispronounced. 
Because yeah. I, I never heard of anybody talking about and I got a Vita. The first time I ever heard of it was in the, the Simpsons. Simpsons, where it was a joke. <laughs> it, we yeah. will now be for our church hymn singing in the Garden of Eden. And like the joke is that it's this like fifteen minute long like nineteen like, sixties like pop culture <laughs> song. It's like oh. <laughs> But uh, yeah, yeah, it, it was definitely By a I boomer Ron joke. Butterfly. <laughs> but yeah, I, 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 I really wish, um, like, my my collection ha- is is slowly kind of evolving. Like, I'm getting rid of a lot of the junk in it. Like, um, there's a lot of games that I I think I'll just never play, uh, or or get the time for it. Like, there's there's a lot of mediocre RPGs in my collection. Like, they're good, but they're not like extremely good. Well, that that's the thing, like. Maybe it'll be worth checking out, but do you really want to put 40 hours into, like, an it's okay kind of game? Yeah, I, I, I'll give you the perfect example. I had the entire Wild Arms series, and I hear okay. that it, it's, a, it's a pretty fine series, but it's never on, like, everybody's best the of lists. lists yeah. And I haven't beaten nearly enough of the best ofs, so I, I can't um, – I'm starting to get to the point where, you know, I, I can only dedicate – uh, a certain amount of time to something like an RPG, um, like I, I'm I'm playing Dragon Quest XI right now. There's no way that I can play any other RPGs before the end of the year. Um, yeah. You know, and I probably won't even be done with it then because it's a it's a long ass game. Yeah, uh, like Dr- Dragon Quest in general, those are long. Yeah, games. they usually tend to be upwards of around eighty to a hundred hours, and yeah. uh, I, and that's not hyper hyperbole. They like, pr- to hyperbole, put things into perspective. Like I put about maybe a hundred ten, a hundred twenty hours into Dark Souls one. Yeah. but that was to platinum it, which means beating it twice and then half of a third time. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, you know. Um, uh, Dragon Quest XI is considered to be like one of the best RPGs of all time already, even though it's it's pretty yeah, new. Yeah, that's that's impressive. Yeah. Um, a lot of people are saying it might be the best Dragon Quest game. Um, and that's also that's like a big deal. It, it, it it's a big deal considering it is Japan's favorite RPG series. Um, yeah. And and has been ever since its original release. In fact, it inspired all the rest of every console RPG. Um, that yeah. that's been released since, and. Um, like I love it. I, I, I genuinely find myself wanting to play it. Like, um, and uh, it's gripped me. But what I'm, what I'm trying to say here is, am I going to go back and play Wild Arms One, right? Uh, you know, after I beat this, or am I gonna play something else that I've missed, like Final Fantasy Twelve? Um, I'm gonna go play Final Fantasy Twelve before I play Wild Arms, and I have countless other games that I that I wish I had played before I get to Wild Arms. So therefore, why do I have five games in a series that I'm never going to touch? Um, yeah. So oh, I, I, regarding FF Twelve, I've said this before, but easily, like hands down, my favorite Sid. Like, oh yeah. He, he, he's like the Majima of Final Fantasy Twelve, in that he only appears like three or four times. But when he does, like, it's, <laughs> it's, it's so good. It's a good time. Well, I, 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 um, I. So I, I'm, I'm curating my collection to, to have like certain features. Like, um, I really like Konami games. So, um, uh, up through the 16 bit area uh, era, I think I want to have every Konami game, and I'm pretty close. Um, so on the NES, I'm only missing a couple, um, and. All of uh, I Wait, are you are you going to import those Famicom games with like Konami Man? Okay, uh, first of are all, you play I have Go- Goonies too. <laughs> I have that. <laughs> I have that actually. Okay. Um, you're you're talking about Y Y World, uh, one and two. Um, yeah. Also Goonies two, which I think features Konami Man as like, uh, a, like an Easter egg or something. I I do have Goonies one and two. Um, They're okay. <laughs> I'm getting pretty close, but I I guess. My feeling is I want all of the American ones. I, I, yeah. The Japan, the Japanese ones aren't necessarily a um, a a uh, requirement for for my uh, my collection. But I have almost all of them. Or if I don't, they're easy to obtain. Wait, I, I know you have Batman and Robin. Was that Konami? Uh, so, like on on Genesis. So Batman and Robin on Genesis is Blue Sky. Batman on oh, Robin me. and Robin on Super Nintendo is the Konami one. I don't have okay. that one. So I only have a couple ones that are getting a little pricier, but none of them are like, um, none of them are super rare. 
so um, at least I have that going for me. I have all the other games. Um, one of them is I, I don't have... Um, uh, I have almost all the NES Konami games, including Ultra games. I'm also including Ultra under that because it's Konami's alternate label. Um, I'm, I'm missing... Uh, uh, one Ninja Turtles game, the 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 fighting game. I don't have the the NES version of that. Oh, Tournament Fighters. Yeah, yeah, I, that that one's really tough to find. I don't uncommon. even know what it plays like. Yeah, and uh, neither do I. I've never played it. Um, I got the Genesis one. That that was actually a childhood memory. I think we like rented Genesis Tournament Fighters, and I finally bought it like over a decade later. I have the Super Nintendo one, which is supposed to be the best one. But um, yeah, I mean, everyone likes the Super Nintendo one, and I get it. I just have like an attachment to the Genesis one. Yeah, me too because I I played it when I was a kid as well. Um, but like I want to get the NES one because I have like almost every Konami NES game. Um, like I'm I'm very close. I have I have the rarest ones. I have um, Lone Ranger, uh, which is a really oh, good Jesus. game. I have um, Gun Dot Smoke or was that Capcom? That's a Capcom game, but I have okay. that. Um, I I have like. I have all the Ninja Turtle games except for that one. I have all the Tiny Toon Adventures games, including the um, like the Cartoon Studio where you kind of just make your own cart uh, like comic. Oh, like yeah, like the Mario Paint kind of. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, what, was, what was the Sonic Sonic Wacky Worlds or something? Yeah, yeah, it was Art Art, Art Alive too. Uh, that was another one uh, that was similar kind of, um, and. I, I also have uh, like I, I have uh, like pretty much everything. I have like um, Batman Returns, which is getting kind of um, rare. The Konami game for NES. Um, I like the Super Nintendo one is much more common, but the NES one is unique. Um, I have Zen Intergalactic Ninja Monsters in my pocket. I have like um, a, a lot of a lot of them. And if I don't have them, I can easily get them. Like I, I, I don't have Top Gun right now, but Top Gun's like one of the easiest games to find for the system, and it's also terrible, so nobody wants it. <laughs> um, uh, you know, it, it's what it's one of those things. So, um, but I, I have like all the rarest titles, and uh, if I don't have it, uh, it's easy to get. So, um, that that's kind of what where I'm gearing my my. And uh, I, I want all the Mega Man games. I, I have them all except for Mega Man Five uh, at the moment. So uh, just just stuff like that. Um, but uh, yeah, I, I wish I had uh, time to curate my my yeah. my uh, mm-hmm. collections. <laughs> this is the, is is the long and short of it. Uh, any other uh, things you would like to weigh in on, Lotus? No, I think that's about it. Okay, uh, well, that is the show for this week. Uh, we want to thank our fans who contributed questions and comments. Uh, you you guys did really great this week. I really want to thank you. You had a lot of really cool things to say, and uh, a lot of people chimed in. That was really cool. Uh, please keep us supplied with awesome topics by submitting uh, questions of your own via the YouTube and SoundCloud pages. Well, there, uh, please give us thumbs up, likes, and five star ratings on iTunes. It helps promote and spread awareness of the show, and any bit of encouragement helps keep the show going. You can also catch us on Tuesdays on our sister podcast, Reactive Consciousness, the in depth look at this week in our lives. Finally, you can friend me as Vise the Bold on Steam, PSN, Xbox Live, Twitter, and Switch. And you can follow me on my YouTube channel, Lotus Prince. You can hit me up on Twitter at at Lotus Prince. And finally, if you are interested in seeing my videos early, getting in on exclusive live streams, selecting upcoming games for me to Let's Play, and getting involved in conversations with me and other patrons on Discord, then perhaps consider swinging by my Patreon account, which can be found at patreon.com slash lotusprince. All right, we will catch everybody on next Tuesday for another episode of Reactive. Catch you then. Until next time, everyone. Bye-bye.